Are we alone? Or is there other life in the universe? We believe that life arose spontaneously on the Earth, so it must be possible for life to appear on other suitable planets. Now to this week's edition of Leading Edge. There is new excitement tonight about the search for possible life in a solar system beyond our own. In the previous episode of our JWST series, which was warmly received by our viewers, we explained that can we find intelligent life on exoplanets, which are present outside of our solar system. In today's episode, we will intrigue your curiosity to a whole another level and will try to evaluate that. Does JWST have the potential to look beyond our universe? What was present behind nothing if all the universe was created from nothing? or how that nothing was created, and is there only one universe outside our universe, or there are colossal and prodigious systems present with entirely different laws of nature and principles of physics, which will make our universe only a tiny puzzle in the whole picture. William James was the first one in 1895 who first proposed the multiverse idea. In his philosophical and moral essay, Is Life Worth Living? The American philosopher says, truly, all we know of good and duty proceeds from natter, which is all plasticity and indifference. Different scientists have made different contributions since then, and the most significant and influential was Stephen Hawking. Multiverse theory was the first and last work of Hawking. So in other words, he was working on the conundrum of the multiverse throughout his life. In his last research paper, A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation, published in the Journal of High Energy of Physics just 10 days before his death, Stephen Hawking and his fellow author put forward a theory about the multiverse and parallel universes that might settle some lingering question. Unfortunately, JDOST could not be launched during the lifetime of Stephen Hawking because of multiple delays in the launch. Today, we have a better shot at the verification of multiverse theory, thanks to the infrared capabilities of JWST. Because of Webb's ability to see the light in the infrared region, it can see without an effort through the dense clouds of dust and smoke present between and within different galaxies. It is also so helpful to track background radiations. But before we analyze that can Webb prove the multiverse theory, let's first understand Hawking's multiverse theory and his idea of inflation. In their research paper, Hawking and his fellow author gave three main postulates. The paper mainly says that there is no infinite number of parallel universes in the multiverse. This number is finite. Contrary to the famous belief that laws of physics might be different in separate universes, Hawking and Hertog were confident that they might be the same. It also explained the way how we might be able to see the proof of this theory. According to them, the evidence of parallel universes lies in the finding of gravitational waves. The leading theory denied the previously established beliefs of the presence of an infinite number of the parallel universe after research at the Cambridge University in the 1980s by James Hartle. Stephen Hawking and Hertog expressed that it cannot be accurate. It does not follow the logical order. An infinite number of universes will have an infinite amount of different arrangements of principles of physics and chemistry. However, the findings in this theory imply that the other universes follow the same physics laws present in our universe. This fact is of great importance. On one side, it makes the statement of finite universes suitable. Also, it makes it more manageable and testable since now, it is no longer an infinite number of underlying basic rules that we must consider. The paper says that, We are not down to a single unique universe, but our findings imply a significant reduction of the multiverse to a much smaller range of possible universes. You might be thinking at this point that what was the thing that made all these scientists think about the presence of more than one universe? The answer lies within the concept of eternal inflation. After the Big Bang happened, exponential inflation happened in our universe or all universes. That process never stopped in some places. Considering this logic, our universe is just one pocket where the exponential inflation stopped and stars, along with galaxies, started to form. You might again be thinking that our universe is still expanding. Right. 
but it is not happening like after the first second of the Big Bang. Stephen Hawking's exact words in an interview with Cambridge University on this matter were, The usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that globally our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes separated by an inflating ocean. The local laws of physics and chemistry can differ from one pocket universe to another, which together would form a multiverse. But I have never been a fan of the multiverse. The theory can't be tested if the scale of different universes in the multiverse is large or infinite. Can there be a boundary to this eternal inflation? To understand the boundary of eternal inflation, we would have to take assistance from the string theory as Hawking and Hertog did. String theory is arguably the most beautiful theory of physics. It is the closest we have reached to the theory of everything. It is the combination of quantum mechanics and the relativity of gravity by Einstein in one equation. So according to it, the boundary of eternal inflation finds its roots at the beginning of time. When we trace our universe backward through background radiations, we will reach the threshold of time at some point. At this point, Hawking and Hertog thought time would also cease to give any meaning. But we have our answer here, starting from that particular boundary. The universe or universes will also have finite structures emerging from the Big Bang. String theory has been the best short for verifying the multiverse theory until today. But the instrument and devices we have used were not sensible enough to receive information from that earlier part of the universe that we have discussed where time ceases to exist, or in other words, from where time started. Primordial gravitational waves, which Stephen Hawking also discussed in his research paper, are very momentous in this all search. Gravitational waves, which Einstein also defined in his general theory of relativity, are disturbances or ripples in the curvature of space-time generated by accelerated masses. Since the time of relativity, scientists have been on the hunt for gravitational waves but are unable to know what that is. In 2015, these waves were discovered for the very first time with the help of an instrument called LIGEO. These gravitational waves happened when two black holes crashed into each other about 1.3 billion years ago. It took 1.3 billion years for these waves to reach Earth. So cosmologists are very confident that if we receive those gravitational waves from the dawn of time, we can solve the two biggest problems of humans' history simultaneously. All in all, we can infer that JDLST is the telescope cosmologists have been waiting for a very long time. Background cosmic radiations and gravitational waves were out of our reach long after their theoretical discovery. After so many years of theoretical work, JDUST might help us practically discover these theories of such a large magnitude. This is the end of today's episode. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.